Dear students, for today we will see about amplitude shift key, which will be basically called as binary amplitude shift key. When here the data will be in the binary form, and there will be a high frequency carrier which will carry this data from one point to another. So we will see what is binary amplitude shift key (BASK), and then we will see how to generate a BASK, and then a detection of BASK. That means you can have BASK modulator, and you can also see BASK demodulator. Okay. So let's start with the topic. The topic is BASK modulator and demodulator, in which we are going to see what is BASK binary amplitude shift key, and then how to generate a BASK wave, and then how to detect a BASK from the modulated wave. So let's start with uh, the definition of binary amplitude shift key. So BASK binary amplitude shift key is a type of amplitude modulation which represents the binary data in the form of variations in the amplitude of signal. So here what will be our purpose is whatever data we have say we have data as 1010 okay now this data can be represented like this this is 1 this is 0 this is 1 this is zero. So this is one zero one zero. Now, if you have a unmodulated carrier, a high frequency carrier, now this carrier is going to take this binary data from one point to another. Okay. Now this two will be your input. This two will be your input where one is your information and one is your carrier. So this binary is your information. This is your information and this is your high frequency carrier. Okay, then the output, whenever the input is binary one, at the output, we'll be having carrier present. Whenever the input is binary zero, the output, there will be no carrier. Whenever it is binary one, output carrier will be present. And whenever it is zero, there is no carrier. So this type of output, what you will you will get in terms of high frequency, that is whenever it is logic one output is present and whenever it is logic zero output is not present. So that output will be called as your amplitude shift keying waveform, ASK waveform, or because the data is binary, you can call it as binary ASK waveform. Okay. So this is what we are going to do in our binary amplitude shift keying. Now that's that our uh, process if you want to uh, theoretically speak then you can tell that BASK involves switching. Switching means keying. BASK involves switching. Switching means keying. Keying the amplitude of a sinusoidal carrier. That is the carrier amplitude is going to vary between two values off and on in accordance with the incoming binary data. That means depending upon the incoming binary data the sinusoidal carrier will be present or absent on or off okay so a data while keeping the frequency and phase constant frequency and phase will be constant only amplitude will be this is also called as on off switching okay the other name for BASK is on off switching okay now if you see the waveforms here in the waveform this is very important whenever you define or explain a binary ASK or ASK anything now here we have shown on top the data. So here you can see the data. The data is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay. Now this is a data what we are what we which we want to send from transmitter to receive. Now that data electrically can be presented like this. This is your 1, this is 0, this is 1, 1. 0 1 0 1 1 1 this is how you can represent your data and every representation is having its own time period so that time period will be called as TB okay so TB will be your time period now you have to have a high frequency carrier high frequency carrier or unmodulated high frequency carrier. Now this is at this stage it is unmodulated. It is unmodulated high frequency carrier which will be having constant amplitude 
this will be constant amplitude okay amplitude it will be having constant frequency and it will be having constant phase now this carrier is going to get multiplied by this binary input sequence okay so if you do a multiplication of that then whenever you have one then you will get a output as it is of the carrier here whenever it is zero then there is no output because anything multiplied by zero is zero again one you will be having carrier present again one you will be having carrier present again zero there is no carrier again one you will be having a, a carrier present again zero there is no carrier again one you are having carrier 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 okay that means this output now this output is showing a carrier waveform when the data is logic one and this output is showing zero volt when the data is logic zero that means the amplitude of the carrier is varying according to the incoming binary data now this is your amplitude shift keying waveform this is your ask waveform okay ask waveform which can also be called as binary ask waveform okay now this is what is important this waveform you have to draw whenever you define what is BASK because the a question in exam can come as uh, or describe the binary ASK with the help of waveforms. So in that you have to give the definition of BASK saying that it, it involves switching or keying the amplitude of a sinusoidal carrier between two values off and on in accordance with the incoming binary data while keeping the frequency and phase constant. This is also called as on off key. Okay, so this is what you have to give a definition, and this waveform you should be able to draw. First, you show the data, then you show the representation of the data in electrical form, then you show an unmodulated carrier, and then at the end, when you are showing a modulated carrier, BASK waveform, there you show that a carrier is present whenever the input data is logic one, carrier is absent whenever the input data is logic zero. This is how is the introduction of BASK. Then we'll go to see how do we generate BASK. Okay, so to see the generation of BASK, now we know that according to the waveform, we have two inputs. So one is this input. Okay, one is this input, which is a high frequency carrier. This is a high frequency carrier. Okay, and one is this input. One is this input, which is a message binary sequence. So if it is one zero one zero then it will be like this one zero one zero okay one zero one zero now this will be your message and this will be your uh, carrier wave now here you have shown a switch okay here you have shown a switch whenever the input is logic one the switch will be closed whenever the input is logic one the switch will be closed okay and the input will pass the carrier part for that time period will pass okay whenever the switch is having a low signal that is zero it will be open and the input carrier will not pass this will not pass okay not pass now in that way you can see that whenever the input here is logic one the carrier is going to pass whenever the input is logic zero the carrier will not pass and that carrier at the output and then it will be properly shaped and then output you will get here okay now here this switch is going to act as a multiplier that is if anything is multiplied by one it will pass if anything is multiplied by zero it will not pass so it is opening and closing and that idea gives an uh, idea of product multiplier also that means at the output if the input was binary one if the input was binary one you will get an output of carrier if the input was zero you will not get output of carrier. if the input was binary one then you will get output of the carrier if the input was zero then you will not get any output now this will be called as your amplitude shift keying waveform ask waveform now for the same we can see the theory the a carrier generator sends a, a continuous high frequency carrier that is obvious the binary sequence from the message signal makes the unipolar input to be either high or low. That is your representation of binary data 1, 0, 1, 0, anything, whatever you have that can be represented in electrical form and in that you can have line coding of unipolar, one-sided, okay. Then you have the high signal 
from the message when it comes it closes the switch allowing the carrier wave to pass hence the output will be the carrier signal at high input when there is low input from the message the switch opens allowing no voltage to appear hence the output will be low the band limiting filter what we have at the end shapes the pulse depending upon the amplitude and phase characteristics okay of the band limiting filter or the pulse shaping filter okay. this was the explanation for bask generation then we will go to see bask detection now if you see demodulator there are two types of uh, ask demodulation now two types means one type will be called as asynchronous ask demodulation and the other type will be called as synchronous ask demodulation now in asynchronous the clock frequency at the transmitter and receiver will not match whereas in synchronous the clock frequency at transmitter and receiver will match so here we have given the clock frequency at the transmitter when matches with the clock frequency at the receiver it is known as synchronous method as the frequency get synchronized otherwise it is called as asynchronous so asynchronous is also called as non coherent and synchronous is called as coherent okay so here you can see first we will go to see what is a non coherent that is asynchronous type of ask detector now here the input to this will be a your amplitude shift king waveform say the input is here the input is say 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 okay so this is 1 this is 0 this is 1 this is 0 okay at a time period which is exactly that for every bit okay time period okay now here this is going to be as a input this will be your input and first it will be bandpass filtered it will be properly passed in that particular frequency range and then you have a combination of rectifier and low pass filter now rectifier will make those carrier wave only of positive pulses when it comes here your one will look like this 1 0 1 0 in this way 1 0 1 0 and the low pass filter will pass only the low frequencies that means it will it will detect only the envelope and at the output you will get a amplitude say for 1 you will get a amplitude and for 0 you will not get amplitude okay now if the input here is above the threshold voltage then output will be taken as logic 1 logic 1 if the input here is below the threshold voltage then the output will be taken as logic 0 so output will be detected in in terms of binary numbers now this is called as your asynchronous amplitude shift king detector in which you have a main thing which is called as envelope detector which consists of rectifier and low pass filter okay so your bask waveform can be detected through its envelope and that envelope voltage whatever you get will be compared with a decision device and in that decision device it will be compared with a threshold voltage and depending upon that whether it is more than the threshold voltage or less than the threshold voltage the output will be binary 1 or binary 0 now here you can see the explanation for this non coherent ask detection technique composed of a bandpass filter and envelope detector along with a decision device it is not require a synchronous carrier there is no synchronous carrier thus the method makes use of rectifier circuit for the rectification of the signal after which the signal is fed to the low pass filter the output of which is then provided to a decision device that compares the signal value with the preset threshold some specific value in a similar manner as done in coherent detection also thus generates the equivalent output which is the original data bit strip so output will be your binary data here, okay then next we'll go to see coherent ask detector which is also called as synchronous now in this you should have a reference of a carrier wave which is which will be the same type of carrier wave what you had in the transmitter so that you are synchronizing so here you are having your carrier wave okay and here you are having your ask waveform that is say for example if the data was 1010 1010 1, 1, then the carrier waveform was carrier was present no carrier carrier was present no carrier okay that uh, that will be the input here and this input will be your a high frequency carrier okay now here we see we have a multiplier this is a multiplier 
okay this is a multiplier the ask signal is applied to the multiplier okay and the integrator now this is a multiplier and this is a integrator okay now this multiplier and integrator together will be called as correlator okay this will be called as correlator correlator okay now the locally generated coherent carrier is applied to the multiplier the output of multiplier is integrated over one bit period so the output of multiplier will be integrated for one bit period say 0 to tb it will be integrated whatever output you get from the multiplier will be integrated for one one bit period or one bit period that is 0 to tb the decision device after that will take the output of integrator okay now this will be some amplitude say for one it will be like this for zero it will be some amplitude okay that will be compared with the threshold voltage as we have done in your asynchronous method also and if the input here is more than the threshold voltage the output will be logic one if the input here if it is less than the threshold voltage the output will be logic zero and in this way you can detect back the binary data at the end this is called as your coherent detection now here you are having a reference of carrier wave carrier frequency so that your timing your timing of the transmitter and receiver are synchronized okay so here you can see the theory for that the demodulation circuitry consists of a product modulator along with an integrator and a decision making device here the input to the product modulator is modulated wave along with sinusoidal carrier the uh, combination of the two is then fed to the integrator that operates successfully according to the bit in interval that is we are integrating from 0 to tb after which it also executes a low pass filtration of the signal then the output of the integrator acts as input to the decision device also a preset threshold is provided to the decision making device the decision device compares the signal at its input with some specific value which is called as threshold value when the signal exceeds the threshold value then the output will be a bit 1 that is logic 1 by the decision device and when the signal decedes is less than the threshold value then the output is zero by the decision device at the output so output you will get binary numbers ones and zeros and then we'll go to see the advantages of ask modulation it offers high bandwidth efficiency it has simple receiver design ask modulation can be used to transmit digital data over optical fiber also ASK modulation and ASK demodulation, both the processes are comparatively very inexpensive. They are very simple. Then we'll go to see what are the disadvantages of ASK modulation. ASK technique is not suitable for high bit rate data transmission. Second, it has poor bandwidth efficiency. And third, it is highly susceptible to noise and other external factors. Then if you see the applications of VASK, you can see uh, there are many applications, but a few are mentioned here. Low frequency RF applications, radio frequency applications, home automation devices, industrial network devices, wireless base stations, tire pressuring monitoring systems. These are few applications of your BASK. Then if you go to see a practical circuit, you can have a generation and detection of BASK signal with a practical circuit. So here you can see you are using a diode here you are using a diode okay and to that diode you are giving two inputs one is your information wave which is a square wave this is one input and one is your high frequency carrier which is sine wave this is one input okay now the what a diode will act here as a multiplier okay and the output here whenever the binary information is zero there will be no carrier whenever the binary information is one carrier will be present here Okay. Now that will be your BASK waveform which you can take across these two points on your CRO. This can be put on CRO and on CRO you can view your BASK waveform. Okay. After that we have so shown a low pass filter where R and C is concerned here. Then this will act as a demodulator. When this BASK waveform from here, BASK is passed through this low pass filter, only the amplitude of the uh, only the amplitude of the BASK signal is detected and output here you will get for input logic 1 you will get the amplitude for input logic 0 no amplitude for input logic 1 amplitude you will get and hence you can recover back the original signal data that is 1010 if you want at the output okay 
So that, that is your BASK detection. So this will be a practical circuit by which you can perform the experiment of generation and detection of BASK signal. For the same circuit, you can have a procedure here. You can check all the R components or connect the R components and equipments as per the circuit diagram. Apply the appropriate signal at the input that is moderating signal in terms of square wave and a high frequency or carrier in terms of sine wave with appropriate peak to peak voltage and frequency. Observe the modulated output across the resistor after diode which, give you the, which gives the BASK signal. Check the demodulated output across the capacitor and plot all these waveforms on a graph paper. This can be your procedure for the same experiment. Okay. Thank you, students.